All right, everybody. Welcome to episode six of the Land Cruiser podcast. And today we're talking about the new Land Cruiser 2024, or maybe introduced as a 2025 uh, in the year. What's pretty cool is, you know, as we all know, 2021 was the last Land Cruiser model that was uh, in the U.S. and they stopped. Why? We weren't buying enough of them, guys. Their their numbers went down to the 2,000, you know, quantity where they used to sell upwards of 15,000 for the 80 series, and in the late 90s, you know, 99, 2000 with the LX uh, 470 and the 100 series. They sold um, same thing in the teens, like 14, 15,000, 11,000. And then it started to go down. The 200 series came out, continued going down because there was more SUVs on the market to choose from at those price points, of course. You know, the $80,000 Land Cruiser and the LX570 was kind of the luxury model. So a lot of people that just wanted to lease it for their business, white collar, let's say, and weren't really off-roading with a vehicle of that price range, they would move to the LX570, let's say, or they would share those sales. So ultimately, it went to the demise of we did not get the 300 series, which the rest of the world did. My God, in Dubai and in Australia and everywhere else, they got them. But what, the good old mighty US? None, nada. We did get the LX600, which is beautiful, but how many have you seen on the road? Literally, how many? <laughs> I'm in Southern California where beautiful cars are a plenty, and I've seen one parked at a Starbucks, and uh, it was a beautiful truck, beautiful truck. If you think people are going gaga over the new GX 550, oh my God, an LX uh, 600, beautiful. So all this to say that I guess they're coming back into the market, but it's not going to be what we expect, unfortunately. So uh, I did a video before going to this, um, I guess, research event I got invited to. I did a video saying, hey, what do you guys want for the next Land Cruiser? If it came back, there was some kind of rumors swirling around, maybe Land Cruiser's coming back. What would you like to see? And this was before that GX 550 came out a couple of weeks prior. And the overwhelming response, like hugely overwhelming. You want to know what that was? People wanted to see the 80 series kind of reinvented. Um, solid front axle, you know, the tailgate door, split tailgate. Um, the 80 series, that's what everybody was saying. And, you know, <laughs> we can't go back in time, right? Because there's not just the manufacturer's choice of what to come out with, but it's also, you know, regulations, the US bumper rules, laws, and, you know, all that stuff that over time, um, you know, gets implemented into the vehicles, all this technology. So the solid axle, even though Jeep still does them, it's not going to happen for a Land Cruiser, unfortunately. It's going to be independent front suspension. And if anything, independent front suspension, when you get that rock crawling or on heavy duty overland trails, that is what's going to fail. Solid axles, they don't fail. Solid axles, I mean, well, unless you're doing something crazy, but it's just so much more robust and trustworthy and reliable than, you know, trying to beef out your biggest aftermarket control arms and everything on the uh, on an independent front suspension. So. We're not going to get solid axles. Actually, everything on our dream list, we're not getting. But I said, I said in a, in a follow-up video, I'm like, guess what? Everybody described an 80 series. So what are you waiting for? Go get an 80 series. It exists. Toyota made it. They just didn't make it in 2024. They made it in, you know, 93, 94, 95 through 97 are the best 80 series 91 92 it had that carryover motor from the fj62 so i say beware unless you're looking for a you know budget wise you you can only spend so much you can still get a land cruiser body frame 
suspension, but the motor in that 91-92 is, is a little lacking at 155 horsepower and they overheat. So more on that at another time. So 93 and up, like everybody described an 80 series, go get one. They're beautiful. And when they're maintained and look clean, nothing is sweeter to the eye. But back to what will they come up with? So as I alluded to, I went to this event before the GX550 came out. I signed an NDA, so I can't talk about it. Um, but since that, a lot's happened. Toyota has kind of hinted, which we're going to look at some video, uh, some images here on my screen. They hinted of the Land Cruiser coming back. This was after post release of the GX550, which start should start by the end of this year to be available. So let's dissect this. This is, this is very interesting because the Land Cruiser has always been the flagship. And then along comes the LX, the LX450 back in 96, and they copy the Land Cruiser, right? 97, the LX450 also, and then 98, you, you had a little bit more difference between the two versus just the cladding and the badge. They started to do more with the LX470 separating itself from the uh, 100 series, but effectively, same vehicle, you know, quite effectively. So the 200 series is the LX570. The 300 series is the LX600. So let's all agree, the LX600 is a different beast than a GX, right? Always has been. GX is one step down from the LX. So the new Land Cruiser that's coming to the US, I guess here's the dilemma that Toyota had. They probably said, look, if we continue with an 85 to $90,000 vehicle, we're going to be in the same situation as we were in you know, the tail ends of 2018, 19, 20, and the last year, 21 for the heritage. So they are coming with a less expensive, probably going to be in the 60 range, Land Cruiser. So how do you do that built on an LX600 frame? You don't. They're going to, they're going to downgrade it. So the next Land Cruiser is going to be based on the Prado. And the Prado is pretty much the exact same thing as the GX, which is the forerunner frame, if you will. So the GX is a Prado, and the Prado is what they're saying is what we're going to get for the Land Cruiser badging. So what does that mean? A Land Cruiser is no longer top dog. A Land Cruiser is kind of on par with the GX 550, but maybe with less amenities. So what just happened? Did Land Cruiser become a forerunner, right? Because the, the old GX is back in the day, it's like a, a, a fancy forerunner, obviously. So just like this article says here, Land Cruiser nameplate won't be a, a 300 series. So that's the Lexus that we're seeing here. And then, well, there's an FJ Cruiser, which it's Toyota, but it's not a Land Cruiser. It's just a cruiser. I'm telling you, on our screen now, we have a 200 series. Those are going to hold their value. And if not, go up because it's got a V8 power plant. The GX, the LX600, and the 300 in the rest of the world does not have a V8. It's a twin turbo V6. And, you know, a V8 is bigger than a V6. And when you throw turbos on it, it's kind of like you're having it, you know, exercise hard all the time to get that power. In my book, a V8 is always going to last longer because it's not going to have as much of a toll on that engine. All right. So that article, let me get up my other article here. Here we go. This is the infamous image that they came out with. Um, just a few days ago. So the 2025, so keep in mind, that'll come out in late 24, Land Cruiser. So they got an FJ40, old school, like not, not a 70s one, a 60s, probably that's a 1965. And that's the silhouette of the new Land Cruiser. That silhouette is the same as the GX. But we'll get closer to that here in a second. Um, I think here I have a better image. There we go, side by side they're the same. That's pretty bang on. Um, you know, and, and think about it, a car manufacturer, how do they kind of save on R&D and, you know, come out of the same plant, except you're putting some body panels and interior differences in a, in a GX, 
and then the land cruiser comes through and you're doing you know different amenities in a land cruiser uh, different taillights different you know obviously the whole front and back is where you're going to do a lot of the visual changes the side profile is going to be the same um Let's see here. I had a bunch of stuff pulled up just so we can share. Look at that four cylinder. So we were just talking V8. Okay, the LX600 is a twin turbo V6. You're actually getting slightly more horsepower, but is that motor going to last 500,000 miles like a good old V8 can when properly maintained? I doubt it. I think you're going to have more problems because, again, running harder all the time, right? So, boy, so there's that same, another version of that image. Pretty cool. I mean, at least we're getting a Land Cruiser, right? And I think here in the US, we have nobody else to blame but ourselves. The whole reason why they're coming with a cheaper model is because we didn't buy enough of the more expensive model. So it, there, there's a better image right now. So side by side, um, obviously you're missing the, the rear wind deflector. Um, the roof rack in, in that silhouette, but that is going to be the truck. And in the front, a little bit more, you know, Land Cruiser or FJ40 styling um, than this GX below it. I think the GX is pretty hot looking. I think it's nice. But then the question is, you know, if they come out with a V6 hybrid, it's going to be just under 400 horsepower, but tons of torque. That's pretty cool. And if you all know KDSS, um, so the, the kinetic drive system where it disconnects the sway bars, the trail version of that Lexus 550 will have the KDSS. The other versions won't. So I don't know what that means for Land Cruiser because Land Cruiser, you're thinking about that is more for someone who wants to do all terrain all the time. So are they going to have a trail model or are they going to be... Uh, making it exclusive to one one of the trim levels so that remains to be seen okay i have where was uh some other images i had some great images to show you i think uh, as i find that here we go so look at that color so blue i think that roof line see the roof is black here and the rest of the car is blue maybe they're going to try to pay homage to a 40 series and have the white kind of like the fj cruiser i hope they don't because that makes me feel too much like it's an fj cruiser versus a land cruiser that back end a little bit more simpler compared to a um a gx but i think another thing which will be a disappointment for all any anybody who's experienced a land cruiser whether it's a a 60 series, a, um, 80, a 100 or 200, we have the split tailgate, right? So you can sit your kids on that lower tailgate, put their ski boots on or hiking boots or wash off feet from being at the beach. Here, it's a entire rear lift gate. I think the glass will open up separately so you can just reach in, but that whole tailgate is gonna swoop up. And now you're sitting in the wintertime on a dirty bumper bit of a letdown because i thought that was always something so cool if you're if you're ever on the trail with a bunch of different trucks different brands everybody gravitates to the land cruiser with the split tailgate that's where you're going to have lunch and and put all your goodies on that lower tailgate so now yeah, maybe people don't go to your land cruiser and you know you don't have to worry about them spilling chips and drinks on your nice carpet there's the side profile again. So that same swoop at the door. So it kind of follows the same, um, I guess, width from the tire wheel well to the window going up. That's kind of a cool design, makes sense. Yeah, and the, these are pictures of the 300. Now that's a beast. If you don't got it, you got to go get an LX. And there's the LX. And the LX again. So there, there's been a couple ver, you know, people anticipating what it's going to look like. I, I think we're going to be surprised. I don't think any renditions yet. As far as the front end, the, the profile is going to be a GX 550. Don't mistake it for anything else. That's what the Land Cruiser profile is going to be. It's not going to be 
uh, the bigger frame, like the LX600. So it's taken a step down to hit that affordability price and, and put it maybe priced at the same or maybe below the GX550. Because an LX600 is more expensive, you know, or an LX570, I should say, back in the day was more expensive than a Land Cruiser. So if the Land Cruiser is sharing the same body as a GX, well, how could the Land Cruiser be more than the GX, you know? because Lexus wants to make that the premium brand. So I think the Land Cruiser falls below the GX 550 pricing. And yeah, some of the some of the renditions I think that we've seen out there, I think they're going to really go FJ40 styling in the front with LEDs of course. But I guess it remains to be seen. Uh, people can keep putting out renditions, but until they do their release, we really won't know what that will look like. But effectively, I think it's a wake up call. Anybody who wants an 80 and was hoping that they would be closer to an 80, although no joke, look at that profile, right? We don't see the door panels, but the silhouette is a little bit 80 looking, right? That curved front, the, the swoop of the windshield and the curved back, that's a little 80s looking, 80 series. But, um, once it's no longer in the shadows and you see it come out, then I think the 80 series kind of uh, withers away. And this is an LX 550 uh, profile. So if you want, and again, you saw that four cylinder. So that four cylinder means they're going to be using the Tacoma, that 2.4 liter hybrid. Um, I don't even think they get the V6 hybrid. Maybe in later years, based on you know market demand, maybe they'll introduce that V6 hybrid, which will be great. But absolutely no V8. Like, don't even dream of it. That's that's they're not even making V8s anymore. Um, so that's that's kind of what we can expect for the first year of the Land Cruiser, a four banger turbo. Um, Maybe it'll be more fuel efficient. And then when you're on the trail, I mean, as, as long as you've got the torque, um, you know, it'll be fine. But if you think about it, an 80 series, the inline six now starts to look like a premium motor. <laughs> like if you get a, you know, a, a classic. And if you really want V8, you got to go to a 200 series. So I think the 200 series, that market's going to gonna hold or climb. And, and if you remember, you know, any car you've ever bought over the years, except for COVID years, you buy it, drive it off the lot, it depreciates right away. Well, you can't buy a brand new 200 series anymore. So it has maybe slightly depreciated. If you get like a 20, 2010, 12, or 2010, 2011, they didn't have them in 2012. 2013, it's kind of the 2012 spillover. Um, 2016, the new body design, the price really jumps um i think those will be you know not that uh, vehicles an investment but they'll hold their value maybe go up over a couple of years again because you won't be able to get a v8 land cruiser so the the land cruiser diehards they're going to go for that big power plant or they're going to go for solid axles in the last year pretty much the best of the best you know when you compare you know the a 40 a 55 a 60 70 series the 80 series is creature comforts and all the ability in the world to go where you want to go. Solid axles. You can rock crawl those babies over, you know, as far as overlanding is a piece of cake. You, you can do way more than overlanding and, and challenge yourself on, you know, some, some pretty steep, crazy trails. Any offshoots that your, your overlanding friends wouldn't dare to try in any other vehicle, but in an 80 series, Absolutely, you can do it. An 80 series will outperform a 100 or a 200 on anything that's like, you know, a, a level up than just a uh, overland trail. So yeah, that's, that's what's uh, on the horizon, folks. A four banger Land Cruiser. I mean, right now I'm set up for maybe a slight disappointment. Sure, it's going to be like, oh, cool, look at the new design. What buttons can you press and what are the gadgets in here? But that's with any car, right? What we're really seeking here with a Land Cruiser is reliability, 
just pure beefiness and go out on the trail and come back, right? Um, and, and just have a cool, rugged truck. I don't know. I don't know. I think some people that would have considered a Land Cruiser will go to a GX 550. Um, well, and you got to do the trail version of it too, if you want to have that KDSS and, and all the goodies. Here's another 2024 compact cruiser. So Toyota compact cruiser. So that's another thing I think they're coming out with is this kind of look, which would be like, a, it says a baby FJ, right? So kind of like the FJ cruiser. So I believe they're gonna come back with the FJ cruiser as well. And it's gonna look a little bit like this, making the Land Cruiser one step up and then the LX600, the ultimate step up, but it's not really, a overland vehicle per se even though they're very capable um so i think it goes like this a compact fj you know ev cruiser then the land cruiser then the gx 550 if you really want to see the totem pole and, and, and who's a little higher than the other so if anybody has been sitting you know uh on the sidelines waiting to see what the next Land Cruiser will be. Uh, go get an 80 series before those get priced, you know, even higher. Go get a 100 if you want the V8. Go get a 200 if you want a very powerful V8. Anytime I've driven my, uh, my wife's LX570 or my Land Cruiser V8, I've never felt like I'm missing power or, man, I wish this was had a little bit more oomph. No way, that has tons in spades of, of power, 383 horsepower. It's phenomenal. Uh, I, I kind of compared it to a Dodge Hemi. I go, look, Dodge trucks, the Ram, they put the Hemi in there and they say, this is a Hemi. I'm like, that's got the same specs as the Toyota Land Cruiser, except the Land Cruiser engine is way more reliable, but it's just, it was the Toyota Land Cruiser engine. They never said like, oh, this is our uh, super duper TRD, uh, you know, powerful engine. It's just like, no, this is our V8. Um, now going to the V6 or sorry, going to an inline, um, sorry, not an inline, but a, but a four cylinder as far as what uh, they're saying is on the horizon. Hopefully they quickly make the option for a uh, 3.6 V6 turbo, at least, right? If the uh, V8's off the table, hopefully they at least add that. So I'm, I'm curious, I'm interested. Um, can't wait to see what they do. I, th I think they're really, um, I, I think, well, what could I say about this research? When I went to this research, they don't really tell you who the manufacturer is, but I mean, when you go there, there's three cars that are on the roads today that they're comparing what people like about them. And then this new vehicle that's sitting there. And I mean, at this point, I, I'm i like, was I looking at a GX 550? I guess now I could say, yeah, in the silhouette. But was I kind of also looking at an FJ Cruiser? Was it for, it could have been for that for all I know. Maybe they were just taking, cause they haven't done the FJ Cruiser body for, for the smaller EV. Maybe they just took the LX 550 style and dress it up kind of the way they want to do an FJ Cruiser, maybe. And I don't think I'm going out of bounds here or anything. Cause look, they're already announcing this. And there's also an image of a 2024 uh, future FJ Cruiser right here. So who knows, who knows? A lot remains to be seen. I think we're gonna have to wait till the end of 2023 for them to really come out and uh, show us what it's gonna be. Yeah, I, I think they, they'll let the sun shine. So instead of setting on this cruiser <laughs> as a silhouette, I think they'll let the sun shine on it and show us exactly what they're coming up with. And at that point, We'll do a recap and we'll say, hey, <laughs> this is better than we were expecting, or this is what we were expecting, or this is not as good as we were expecting. But I, I have 
380s right now. So obviously you, you can tell I like them. A diesel, an HDJ, and two FCJ 80s. I love them. They drive great. Uh, it keeps up with traffic, 80 miles an hour on the highway. Um, you know, they struggle going up big, steep grades, especially when you weigh them down with a lot of equipment. The V8 solves that. But then in a V8, you don't have an 80 series. You got a 100, you know, with the IFS front or a 200 with IFS also. So I guess there's a, a lot of trade-offs between the different, like a 60 to an 80, an 80 to a 100, and a 100 to 200. That's why I've done all my comparison videos. Um, but one thing's for sure, an 80 is a thing of the past. And if you want an 80, you got to go get it on the used market and get yourself the cleanest one possible outside of the rust belt california ones texas ones eh, florida they can get a little rusty but georgia you want to stay below the rust belt and do your do your research um on that through carfax see where the car has lived its whole life just because it's in california at the time you're buying it doesn't mean it was always there i and i don't get it while well, people don't want to spend the money to get a six pack of Carfax for like 99 bucks. And it can save you a lot of headache down the road, a lot more than 99 bucks, you know, rust repair ain't no joke. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's where it's at guys. That's uh, what we can expect. So 80 series, 100, 200s, they only made so many. So pick them up while you can unless you really want to wait for what's going to come out with the next Land Cruiser, which if you're, if I don't know, four cylinder, a again, a 200 series is going to be bigger. It's going to be stronger. Uh, it already has KDSS on all of them. So it's not like a trail rated model or trim level. The 200 series, my God, I, I you know, imagine a 2016 for 65 grand versus a brand new 2024 for 65 grand. What's better, right? Even, even if that Land Cruiser has 50, 60,000 miles on it, it's a V8. It's going to last longer than a uh, turbo V6. Okay. Fingers crossed. Let's hope Toyota doesn't d disappoint. So we'll see when the time comes. Um, but if you were looking at the used market, if I were you, I'd pull the trigger before this next Land Cruiser comes out. And then, you know, the line gets a lot longer for people that decide to go to a previous model. All right. Well, um, we're going to wrap it up. So thanks for tuning in to the podcast. Uh, this podcast, I didn't have a guest. It was our guest was the 2024 Land Cruiser, that, or 2025, I should say, that can't quite speak for itself yet. <laughs> so I had to do all the talking. Um, but yeah, let's let's wait, let's see, and uh, you know, any, anybody on the podcast, you can reach out to me. Any questions, um, any sidebars, I'll be available. So thanks for tuning in, and happy trails. And we'll see you on the next one. All right.